outcome. So we try to get the children to play these very simple scales on various um, strings in whatever position they come up with. Um, one thing you can do here as well is you can go back in the method, and that is explained in these pages that deal with the finger patterns. The song, one of the first songs <coughs> that uses all four fingers is, and we've played this. That's the first uh, song that comes up in volume number two. But we can now do um, two different things. First of all, if we don't use open strings, we can play all of these songs. The same song can be played in different positions, or you can keep the song on the same on the same notes and play it in third position. Yeah. So all of the songs that have that very first. Um, I should go back to that. Uh, um, all the songs that are in the beginning of the second volume that start with the third finger as tonic. Um, you have to forgive me, this is a very anemic computer. Um, the university will give me a new one on Friday. This thing is <laughs> close, to, close to five years old and doesn't often react to commands. Um, but it's, it's been a faithful servant. Um, so these, uh, the idea of moving children, and you're talking about after about nine months to a year of playing, uh, by the time you get to the middle of the second volume, probably a year and a half, to start moving the children with very simple songs and very simple scales all over the violin uh, introduces an ability that is uncommon in most other methods. So at the end of the book, the children are able to play We can then do two octave scales in one position over four strings. And that can work all over the violin. Yeah. And that could be done within the first two years of playing. Um, it, of course, as you know from your teaching, it depends so much on the child. Yeah. Some children um, start at age four, and they can actually do this in two years and then they're six years old and can play two octave scales all over the violin, which is very nice. Other children, depending on how they take to it, how much interest there is at home, how much practice time there's involved, um, probably will take more time for this. And it all varies and is really left to the experience of the teacher. It would be wrong for us to say, well, you have to finish this book in a certain amount of time. That, that all varies greatly. So the second volume introduces three basic finger patterns, allows major minor scales in positions, and allows all of these familiar songs to be played in different positions. Yeah. Because the songs are familiar, if the child starts it in third or fourth position, it'll play the right notes because the children's song is known. Good. Now, the third volume, um, the first half of the third volume can be pretty much used simultaneously with the second volume. It just offers more playing material, and just about all of it is in different duos for two violins. So the, the child typically, unless it's marked, um, the child plays the upper voice, the teacher plays the lower voice, and it's a lot of material that the child can play. That's not to say if a child is really fast that you can say, well, you know what, we'll skip this song or we'll skip this page, and you move on. Um, that's certainly uh, left up to the teacher. But you can see here that the book starts with the same finger pattern with a high third finger that the second volume starts with. Um, so in the beginning it is the same, then it gets a little bit more difficult than the second volume does. Um, then when you get past the middle of the third volume, um, we introduce all the possible finger patterns that can be done in first position 
including things that still use the same patterns in terms of the uh, half sets between the fingers, but it can be starting, for example, on an A flat. Yeah, that's finger pattern number one, but you started in this case on an A flat, so you are really in half position. Yeah, you've also by then introduced the high th fourth finger, so you can do. It just goes through all the possible um, finger patterns that can be done on. So, third volume, old and new finger patterns, playing in all keys, playing in different positions. Um, and it offers many duets in different style periods, all the way from Baroque to contemporary. Uh, my father had a composer friend, uh, Bertolt Hummel, who was in, living in our town and he was a string player himself it was very easy to go to him and say look we are this far we can use these finger patterns we can use these notes we can use these rhythms can you write us a few pieces for it and uh, um, he was kind enough to do so, so that was uh, very enjoyable so the fourth volume then starts actually with reading notes in positions And it starts with the uh, with third position. Um, at first, some familiar songs, but then a lot of different songs that are in first position. In in, in third position, later on introduces the second position, also with many different songs that are played in second position. Um, it introduces harmonics. Um, first, natural harmonics. as well as then, uh, just as an introduction, shows that you can play artificial harmonics by putting a finger down and using one finger for the harmonic. Yeah, there, there are no particular exercises for that yet, but the child gets familiar with the idea that the string can be subdivided by lightly touching the string in different parts and you get, you get different pitches accordingly. The third volume also starts introducing all different strokes in rudimentary form and there and also in in, in other uh, parts of the of the method are references to the violinmasterclass.com website um, it's a website that I published uh, four years ago and many of you probably know it it has rudimentary exercises so that's a good time when we start talking about brush strokes and spiccato for the children for the parents to go to that website and see the very rudimentary exercises in it so for example with the brush stroke we would start a detaché in the lower half lift it off at the end of each stroke get a little bit faster at it higher in the bow and then instead of tilting the bow play with full hair and the child can get an idea of how a spiccato might work yeah. so this is introduced in rudimentary form of course slowly then come a few songs that use these techniques staccato there are always a lot of questions about the terminology um, I find that terminologies like staccatos, even martelis, spiccato, and so on, are not used uniformly from one studio to another, certainly not from one country to another. Um, a, a conductor that asks the violins to play staccato very seldom means apo staccato, which is what violinists usually uh, mean when they talk about staccato. Everything else can be a stuck, it can be a spiccato, it can be a martelet stroke. The conductor just wants it short. Um, wind players, an, an oboist who talks about staccato means short notes. Um, so it, it's very important to us that at that point, at least between the teacher and the student, there is a very clear terminology. 